Hi, I want to talk to you about the heat of solution lab. Uh, for my students, we do this as what's called a hand warmer lab. We use the Flynn lab. Um, but this lab, very, very common um, in lots and lots of labs across uh, universities, colleges, and high schools. Um, so at the heart of it, here's what it is. Um, you are going to take some water, pour it into your calorimeter, your styrofoam cup, um, take the temperature of that initial water, and then you simply pour a salt into that water. If you're stirring, you might have a stirring rod, and um, you watch for the temperature to increase or decrease until it reaches thermal equilibrium. So for example, I would pour this salt in for this particular substance, the temperature of the overall solution would increase, 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 and as soon as I saw it level off, that's what I would record as my T final, my, um, my final temperature. And that's all you do. This is a quick lab. This is a quick lab. Um, now, a little reminder, whenever you're doing calorimetry, you need to find the calorimeter constant. I will include uh, down below the link of how to figure out the calorimeter constant. So I just want to remind you, you need to determine the calorimeter constant. Now, there are really two ways to do this lab, and it depends on what you've been assigned. So I want to talk about both of them. Uh, the first one is, um, oh, and notice I gave your steps. Just overall, in general, you're going to measure the water, you pour it in here, take the temperature, add the salt, get the final temperature, and then you're going to record that change in temperature. Easy peasy, okay? You could also do this with two solutions. I could have like a sodium hydroxide base in here and add um, a, a hydrochloric acid to this and then watch the temperature go up. That would also be a heat of solution uh, type of lab. So you can add water and salts or you could add two different solutions. Um, so here are the two basic questions um, usually that a professor will have you or a teacher will have you look at. Number one, you could be comparing the heat of reaction for different salts. So for my students, they have to determine which substance would make the best hand warmer. And so there's like eight different salts that they have to test. So for that, they will need to have the same amount of water and the same amount of salt. So they're going to use 50 mils of water every single trial, and they're going to use three grams of salt every single trial. I actually leave it up to them. They can use three grams or five grams, whatever they want, but you're using the same amount every time. So there's one is that you're comparing different salts, how much energy is released or absorbed for each salt. Now, the second way that you could do this is that you're going to compare different amounts of salts. So I'm going to have this one same salt, but I'm going to do one grams, three grams, five grams, seven grams. In that case, you're still going to use the same amount of water every time. You're going to use your 50 mils, um, but then I pour my 50 mils in, I've weighed out my one gram, put my temperature probe in, get the temperature, pour in my one gram, stir, wait for it to um, come to the highest final temperature. Great, dump it out, rinse it out, start over. Now, when I put my 50 mils of water in here, pour in three grams this time, same thing. Temperature, what does that come to? And you do that for multiple um, multiple salts. When you do this, what you're going to discover is um, there's a direct relationship between the amount of salt you add and the energy that's released or absorbed. However, because delta H is a state function, is energy divided by moles, the delta H is always the same. Um, so that's what you discover from, um, from doing different, different salts. Oh, my daughter is here. I'll let you meet my daughter. This is my youngest daughter, cute Micah. Micah, come meet everybody. We're doing heat of solution. Oh, I'm very excited. <laughs> nice. You want to say oh, hi? Oh, you're calorie tree too? Yes, yes. Hi. This is Micah. <laughs> Love you so much. Love you too. Love you. Hang, hang tight for a second. I'll finish this. Okay, now the really um, important thing on doing this math is you have to remember on heat of solution, you add the masses of the water and the salt. So in this situation, 50 mils of water, remember the density of water is one, one gram per one mil. 50 mils of water is 50 grams of water plus three grams of salt. So my mass that I put right here for M would be 53, 50 plus three. Now, I will also include down below the link um, of how to calculate heat of solution for you so that you could review this math really quick. I just wanted to show you you're going to have some salts that increase in temperature, some salts that decrease in temperature when you mix them in the solution. I know you're thinking what's exothermic and what's endothermic. When I put 
this salt in here, the temperature of the solution goes up. So what that tells me is when that salt goes in there, bonds are broken, water surrounds it, it's a salvation process. That releases energy. Where does the energy go? Into the solution, into the water, and the temperature goes up. And that's what my temperature probe will show me. Now, in an endothermic reaction, so remember over here, this would be called exothermic. Let me write that down. This would be exothermic because the reaction, the reaction itself, the dissolving process is what's releasing energy. This is the temperature decreases for the solution. And remember, this is going to be for the solution right there. If the temperature decreases for the solution, that means the reaction is endothermic. So think about this with me. Um, put my temperature probe in this cup, pour in the salt, the temperature goes down. What happened? Well, as the bonds were broken, water surrounded it, that took, ultimately, took energy. Where did it get the energy from? The water, the solution. So it robbed energy from the solution, went into the reaction, and so the sensation that I observe is that the temperature of the whole solution goes down. So the reaction was endothermic, absorbed energy from the solution. Um, Last thing that you need to know, to calculate, sorry, that should be a delta H right there. Um, to calculate delta H, you just take the energy uh, that you determined from this reaction and divide it by the moles of salt, moles of salt that were used. Same thing over here. This will end up being negative because it's endothermic and this one will end up being positive because it's exothermic. Just a really important reminder, watch your, your signs. Here, the reaction releases energy um, and it releases energy into the solution and the calorimeter. It's going to be the water inside of here, the solution and the cup is going to absorb the energy that's released when the salt is surrounded by water. In contrast, in this one, an endothermic reaction, uh, it's the dissolving process. The salt in the water is going to take in energy, absorb, that's positive, um, and what's released is energy from the solution in the cup. The energy from that water, from that cup, goes into exothermic. It releases into uh, that reaction. So your negatives go here on the solution and the calorimeter for an endothermic reaction. Just be careful on those two. So again, if you have questions on the calorimeter constant or doing these calculations for heat of solution, um, I will include both of those links down below. Good work. This is a fun lab. It will go quick. It'll actually take you more time to do the math than to actually do the lab. Have a really good day. Thank you.